Welcome to the fourth edition of iStat Insights, proudly sponsored by PwC. Today I'm joined by Chief Executive Officer of Goshawk, Ruth Kelly. Congratulations on your role in Goshawk and where they've come to date. Maybe to our audience it would be interesting to discuss um, what the shareholders' perspective is at Goshawk, who they are and what they see of the attractiveness of this market. Okay, well our shareholders have been involved in the business since we set it up almost five years ago now. Um, so they've seen the business grow from zero, if you like, to a uh, situation now where we have more than 220 committed aircraft. That's more than $11 billion of AUM. We'll have more than 80 people in the business by the end of this year. Our lender base uh, is in excess of 100 banks and, and, and financial institutions. Uh, our shareholders have supported us through our move into our new headquarter office here in, in the centre of Dublin. So that commitment speaks for itself in terms of, of the shareholder um, attractiveness, I suppose, uh, and the attractiveness of Gossock to our shareholders as, a, as an investment. They like the risk-adjusted returns. Um, they've said publicly themselves a number of times that aircraft leasing is now a pillar investment class for them. So safe to say that they're a long-term investor in Gossock. Uh, they're, they're not an investor looking for an exit. There has been some market talk and our shareholders have alluded to the fact that an IPO might be on, on, on the cards for Gossock at some point in the future. And that might sound like uh, a contradiction, I suppose, in terms of the shareholders' intention for the business, but our shareholders are a financial conglomerate. They're invested in lots of different asset classes, typically real assets with, with cash flows, uh, and they have a track record of uh, seeding and starting businesses and then listing those business, uh, businesses um, partially uh, in a situation where they maintain a majority interest uh, or they maintain at least the largest shareholder in interest. So they continue to control the business. Um, so it's, it's in that context that potentially they might consider an IPO for the business, but they are a long-term shareholder. IPOs are obviously an interesting um, exit for shareholders and obviously an interesting position in aircraft leasing, whereas a lot of the market would think that a lot of the lessors have had mixed results um, by accessing the public markets through an IPO. What are your thoughts on that? Obviously life is very different uh, as a private company versus a public company. Uh, we're a private company. W one of our shareholders is, is a listed company uh, in Hong Kong. So we, we have a mirror into to both lies, if you like, in terms of both private uh, and public. Um, as a private company, you know, particularly in our case where we have a single-minded shareholder base, the dialogue is very open between us and our shareholder. It's, it's our job in life to run a business. You know, the Gossock team uh, are tasked with uh, running Gossock in the best interests of our shareholders and, and generating uh, good returns uh, aligned to what our shareholders want to achieve from the business. With a single shareholder base, it, it's easier to have that dialogue. Uh, our shareholders are very uh, interested in, in knowing about the sector. They're very in, in involved in terms of understanding what happens in the business, including all the challenges that we face from time to time. We're very aligned and open and, and close to our shareholder in terms of what they want to achieve from the business. So it's easier for us to get that relationship right and, and for us to achieve in the business what the shareholders want. I suppose as a public company, the shareholder base is a lot more diverse. Um, shareholders uh, are not so involved in the business. Um, they tend to look at the business at a very high level and, and they tend to look at the business in terms of you know, how it compares uh, to generic valuation tools. And problems can arise when those generic valuation tools are not aligned to the value drivers in the business, I suppose. Um, so, so that's probably the crux of the challenge for listed companies. Um, and really the best way to overcome that uh, is, is trying to educate the shareholder base. That's easier said than done because although our sector offers great risk-adjusted returns to, to shareholders, um, it, it is difficult to get the attention of shareholders and of the investor base because at the end of the day, we are quite a niche sector. We're quite a small sector in global, global terms. So you've had a very busy last few months or probably last couple of years, Ruth, and congratulations on that. Um, you've obviously now you're going to acquire, acquire Sky and you've obviously made an order book with uh, both manufacturers, narrow body manufacturers and Airbus and Boeing. Maybe you could touch on those two points and uh, uh, what were your thought processes behind those? We'll take the Sky acquisition first. Um, the Sky, the, the team at Sky built a, a great portfolio which is very closely aligned to the type of portfolio that Gossock itself had, had built as well. The Sky portfolio is primarily narrow body focused like ours very young average age, very similar to, to Gossock's portfolio. Um, long average remaining lease term, again, very similar to, to, to Gossock's. 
um, and a good complement of lessees in the portfolio without too much overlap. Adding the two, the two portfolios uh, adds 17 lessees, I think, in six countries to our business. So, so not, not too much overlap in that context. So when that opportunity arose in the marketplace, uh, the fit was really good for Gossok. Um, so strategically, it made sense um, for us to consider acquiring uh, that business and that portfolio. Now, at the outset, uh, I guess, like we do for every transaction and, and as we approach every transaction, uh, we, we sat down and brainstormed uh, and tried to figure out how we could differentiate ourselves in, in the process, other than by price. Uh, we, we rarely win because of price, I suppose. And really what we concluded was that we would be able to differentiate ourselves in terms of making ourselves the lowest execution risk bidder uh, in, in that formal RFP process. Um, so we set about doing that and we did that by fully engaging in the due diligence process. Uh, we upfronted a lot of the due diligence work. Uh, we very quickly put in place our funding for the acquisition, our debt and our equity funding. Uh, and we very, were very proactive, I suppose, and engaged in terms of agreeing the, the purchase agreement document uh, with the Sky team. What does the Sky acquisition do for Gossok, I guess? And, and when we combine the businesses, what will the benefits be? Um, well, first of all, it de-risks our business. We're now a larger business. As I mentioned, we will have more than 220 committed aircraft in the business post the acquisition of Sky. Uh, and that diversification with additional lessees de-risks the business. Second thing it does for us is it um, means that we're a larger business and that brings us closer to getting investment grade rating. Um, size matters to the rating agencies uh, and with Sky we're closer uh, to the size of a business that, that will achieve an investment grade rating. And thirdly, I suppose, with that investment grade rating, uh, we will have access to additional sources of debt funding. Uh, that de-risks our business because, because we have more diversification in, in the debt side of, of our portfolio, if you like. Uh, and also it gives us access to cheaper funding and that makes us more competitive or allows us to be more competitive and therefore the long-term sustainability of the business is better. So ultimately, the Sky acquisition does very good strategic things for our business. So in relation to obviously the next step, and I think you've gone on record by saying that it's the, the, the logical step for a mature less or less or a mature leasing company is to make a, to do new orders with the OEMs. And obviously now you've come out with um, your order book for with Airbus and Boeing between 2023 and 2025. Maybe you can talk us through the rationale behind that and um, how you see that fitting in with your business going forward. That's right, Jerry. We just announced uh, an order for 20 uh, Boeing and 20 Airbus narrowbody aircraft um, in the last few months. I suppose the strategic rationale for ordering aircraft it is quite logical in the sense that uh, it, it gives us a new product stream for our customers. Uh, we, we now have an order stream uh, and, and aircraft for placement uh, with our airline customers. Secondly, it makes us more relevant to the manufacturers and that opens more doors in terms of opportunities of what we can do with Boeing and Airbus. Um, and thirdly, it, it adds an element of built-in growth for the business, uh, which, which is important. I think that the order doesn't necessarily give us a competitive advantage relative to our other peers who have order books. What it does for us is it makes us a more mature a more holistic leasing company, if you like, um, and it places us you know, in a position where we can offer the full suite of leasing products to the marketplace. And for our team as well, it means that our team uh, have uh, the wherewithal and the capability and the experiences uh, of offering the full suite uh, of leasing products to our customers. So, so it's good for the team as well. Why now, I suppose, is, is prob probably a logical question. And, and you're right, we have been mentioning over the last number of years that uh, we would consider uh, an OEM order. So, so why have we done it now? Um, I think that's, that's probably most closely related to our size. When we built uh, Gossok and when we set about building Gossok, uh, we and our shareholders were very focused on building a business which generated stable, predictable returns, stable, predictable cash flows. And you can do that when you build your book by means of sale and leasebacks uh, or by means of buying portfolios because when you buy the aircraft, you know what the revenue stream is for the remaining lease term. You typically finance uh, the aircraft at the time you buy them. So you have that predictability, uh, you have that stability in terms of your cash flows. Placing an order is a slight shift in that risk profile in that there are a number of uncertainties with an order. You don't know how much rent you're going to earn on the aircraft on the day you buy it. 
uh, you don't know how much your funding is going to cost uh, at the time you take possession of that aircraft. So there is, it is a different uh, risk profile for the business. Um, and we didn't want to shift that risk profile too significantly. Um, so by the time we take delivery of our orders, which commence in 2023, you know, we'll more than likely be at 250, 300 aircraft less or at that time. And having 40 aircraft deliver over a three year period in the context of a 250 or 300 aircraft less or is insignificant um, relative, relative to a situation where you might order 40 aircraft when you only own 50. Um, so, so really our, our size probably w was quite relevant in terms of driving the timing. Um, and obviously it was really important that you know, we achieved what, what we felt was a, uh, the right price and the right deal with both of the manufacturers. So that negotiation took some time, but, but you know, we, we felt we got there as well uh, in, terms of, uh, in terms of what we achieved with the OEM orders. So really there are the motivations behind it and the objectives that we have in terms of placing that order. So you've obviously mentioned um, investment grade as potentially being um, on the horizon. Maybe you could talk a bit to that process, but also on a wider scale, there's been a lot of positivity in the market about your um, liability management of the balance sheet. And maybe you could talk a little bit about how you go about um, doing that so successfully. Very high level, we think about it as there being three pools of debt that we want to gain access to. Um, the first pool is bank debt, and banks offer a number of debt products in the marketplace, primarily secured, some unsecured. The second pool is private institutional debt. Um, that's primarily unsecured debt. There, there is some secured, but it's primarily unsecured. And the third pool is public institutional uh, debt uh, or public bonds. We've been very successful uh, in terms of accessing the first two pools of debt. Uh, we've, we've a lot of different bank debt facilities, both you know, secured and, and unsecured. Um, in the second pool, the private institutional market, we've been particularly innovative. Uh, we've accessed the US private placement market a number of times. Uh, we're the largest aircraft lessor to have accessed uh, the US private placement market, uh, having done the largest deal uh, in 2017. Um, we have accessed the Schulschein market uh, in Germany, which is essentially a European private placement market, and we were the first lessor to access that market. And we've also done some unsecured debt with institutions in Asia, which again is, is quite unique. So we've been very successful in terms of accessing that second uh, market, uh, and the team have been very innovative there and very successful. The next step for us is, is, is to access the third pool, which is uh, the public institutional market, or the public bond market. Um, we need an investment grade rating in order to do that um, and um, you know that's something that that we are working towards uh, we're not in any any rush we will do it when the time is right um, but for us we, we do have an ambition and an objective to get an investment grade rating and to access that market and, and that will do great things for us in terms of uh, again de-risking the business because it gives us access to the largest pool of debt um, and it should help uh, to make us more competitive because the, the, the pricing of debt in that market should be more competitive and, and that should sustain the business long term. So, you know, for the team, I think uh, it, there are some very interesting times ahead in terms of us going on that journey uh, of getting investment grade and then using that investment grade uh, to, to access different uh, debt markets. So I suppose moving on to something different now, um, which is people and uh, I suppose human capital and human capital you know, is extremely important in this industry. It's all about relationships, both internally and externally. Um, I think you've gone on record as saying that, you know, uh, retaining people and getting the right people in is, you know, is very difficult in this market because there's so many lessors uh, establishing themselves, particularly in Dublin. Um, how do you go about um, managing that? And um, maybe you could talk a little bit around that. You know, people are the cornerstone of an aircraft leasing business. Um, it's, it's people, it's not processes or machines that uh, buy aircraft, uh, collect the rent, uh, prepare your accounts, finance aircraft, um, deal with problems when they arise. That, that's all done by people. Um, so it's really important um, that we, you know, that, that every lessor uh, has, has a strong team and I think the performance of a lessor is very closely aligned to the quality of the team. Gossok has a great team. And I, I suppose I, I would say that, wouldn't I? But I think the track record speaks for itself in terms of what the team has achieved since we set the business up uh, over, you know, over the last four or five years. Um, so, you know, what's really key and what I'm really conscious of is the need to continue to attract quality people to our business because we are a growing business. Um, and just as importantly, if not more importantly, 
to maintain and retain the quality people uh, that we have in the business. So how do we do that? Well, I, I suppose there are a number of you know, generic tools, if you like, that, that, that we have to, as a, as a base case, offer people, and we do. I mean, uh, for example, we have an educational support program in the business. Um, we look at flexible working. Uh, you know, we provide a very nice working environment for our people. So all of those things are, are almost, you know, they're almost the base case necessity. What we do in addition to that in Gossok is, is something that we feel is, is a little bit unique. Um, we, we encourage people to think about what experiences they would like to achieve for themselves during their time at Gossok. And we encourage them to you know, discuss those experiences with the business and we as a business will work with our people to try and make sure that they achieve those experiences. Um, we have a very flat structure here. Um, so you know, we, we encourage people to think about their careers in the context of uh, building their building blocks of experiences, if you like. So what do I mean by that? Uh, it's probably easier to explain by, by way of examples, I suppose. Um, so, so for example, if you work as an accountant in the finance department in Gossok and you, know, you, you have an interest in, let's say, the area of credit analysis, we would encourage people to make that known. And we would encourage, uh, you know, and, and, and the business would work with people to try and, and, and see if they could gain some experience in that area. So for example, maybe give them an opportunity to attend a credit due diligence uh, or write a credit analysis as part of a credit paper. Uh, another example is maybe you work in, in a team in Gossok um, and, and your job doesn't involve managing people, um, but you're ready for people management experience and it's something that you want to do. Uh, again, we would encourage people to discuss that with the business. And, and as a business, we would try to you know, make that experience happen for people, maybe by means of you know, allowing them or, or facilitating that they manage a project team, for example. So they gain the experience, even though it's not necessarily part of their day job. Or maybe somebody is in their job and they're already challenged and they're already happy with what they're doing. And again, we would encourage people to make that known to the business because that's also okay. Um, you know, it's really great that people are fulfilled uh, in the job that they're doing at the moment. So really, what we're trying to do is make sure that for everybody in Gossok, that they come to work every day um, interested in what they're doing, enjoying what they're doing when they're actually in the office every day. Um, and what one person finds challenging and interesting is quite unique. Everybody's different. Um, so, so really it's about trying to get to know the individual and, and meet their particular needs, if you like. And that's a win-win. From the, the person's perspective, they're fulfilled in terms of their personal development, in terms of their career development. Um, and in terms of Gossok, uh, we have a team who are you know, because they're fulfilled, they're happy. Because they're happy, they're more committed. And that should lead to them staying in the business longer. So, so it's quite a different, unique approach. Uh, and, you know, our flat structure facilitates it because having a flat structure allows you uh, to, um, you know, offer people a very wide breadth of experiences. So Ruth, thanks for that. You've obviously had a very, very busy last number of years, but what does the future hold, I suppose, in the next kind of two to five years? Where do you see Gosshawk going to? I suppose I see the next uh, number of years being very interesting and exciting for the Gosshawk team. Um, I think, you know, we talked a little bit about, for example, the innovation and the innovative approach that the team has when it comes to liability management and some of the pioneering structures that the team here have put in place. Um, we talked a little bit about our unique approach to talent management uh, and, and to people management. That innovative mindset spreads right across the business uh, and I think that's going to yield um, some um, interesting new ways uh, that we carry out our day-to-day -day business in Gossok in terms of not only how we sort of buy, sell and finance our aircraft but also in terms of how we manage talent, uh, how we manage the operations of our business, how we think about risk management in the business. We spoke a little bit about our intentions and our, our investment grade journey that we're embarking upon. Um, I think that journey in itself is going to be very interesting for the team here. Um, and when we achieve uh, the rating that we want, um, that's going to open a door to a whole new world of funding structures for the business. Uh, and that whole new world is there to be explored uh, by the team for the benefit of the business. So that's going to be very exciting. We touched on our OEM order, which adds a whole new dimension to Gossok. Um, and there's a whole new set of experiences there for the team 
uh, to embark upon uh, in terms of uh, obviously all the placement of aircraft challenges, uh, specking of aircraft, etc., which happen long before we physically and practically take delivery of the aircraft. Uh, and obviously we have a PDP schedule which needs to be funded uh, and that needs to be built into our thinking around liability management. So that's very interesting and I think that's going to present uh, lots of um, dynamic and exciting things for our team to do here. We have a shareholder who's very committed to the business. Um, they have the desire and the wherewithal for us to continue to grow the business. Uh, and that means to continue to grow the team. Um, we touched on you know, the possibility of a partial IBO, IPO being a potential for the business. Uh, that in itself will be a very interesting journey for, for the business and for people in the business. Um, so I think you know, we, we have lots to do over the next few years. Uh, when you ask me what the next few years are going to look like, uh, words like fast moving, dynamic, challenging, but very interesting spring to mind. Well, Ruth, I'd like to congratulate you on your success to date. Um, you've obviously got a very, very busy few years ahead of you, and thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks, Jerry. We hope you enjoyed today's version of ISTAD Insights, and we look forward to seeing you in Prague at ISTAD EMEA.